Hi there, and welcome back to Nature and Code. We're in chapter three, and in this lecture, I would like to go a little deeper into some of the new uh, JavaScript concepts we recently encountered while developing this code here, this um, coin flipping example. So in particular, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, if else construct or control flow in general. Uh, then I want to talk a little bit about the different types that we encountered so far, uh, strings, numbers, and booleans. And um, just talk a little bit about the issues involved with these, with these concepts. So let's first talk about control flow. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new file uh, for this. So let me just um, copy this uh, code over here. And then I'm just going to uh, get rid of all of this JavaScript so that I can start from scratch. So um, let's look at the if else statement. Let me come up with an example here. Let me do this. Let me define a variable called x. And I'm going to store a random number uh, between 1 and 0 in this variable. And now I could uh, say, for example, if um, x is smaller than, say, 0.3, then um, I'm going to print into the console um, first to the number, and then that it is smaller than 0.3. Yeah, so I'm just going to basically uh, make the statement here that whatever number we come up with, uh, it is smaller than 0.3. Um, if that's not the case, then so else I'm going to say console log. So basically the same thing here, except of course a little bit different. So x is um, in this case larger or equal to 0.3. So these are the only two options, right? So let me save this, and uh, I'm going to save this here in chapter 3 uh, as a file called control slow. All right, save the file. Now let me go over to my browser. This was the, uh, there it is. This was the example that we developed before. All right, so let's take a look at this. So here it says 0.93 is larger or equal than 0.3, and that's of course correct. And if I reload this now a number of times, so smaller than three, uh, larger than three, 0.3, uh, small, uh, larger again, and so on. So you know, whenever I reload this, this is a correct statement here. So this code seems to work. Okay, let's go back. Uh, to the code. Okay, so there are a couple of things I want to explain um, in more detail. So first, I think this code is pretty straightforward, right? If this condition in parentheses here is true, then execute whatever you find here in the curly brackets. Otherwise, execute whatever you find here within these curly brackets. Now, I mentioned in the previous lecture that there's also an else if. So how does this work? Well, you could just add um, an else if here. So with another condition, say we could, for example, check if this number is um, smaller than 0.6, say. OK, so, so how does this work? So basically, the way this works is your code will first check if this condition is true. And if so, it will, of course, execute this code. And it will be then done with this whole if, else, if, else construct. Um, so if this is not true, then it will go to the next line here, because there's an else here. And so here's a new condition, so it will check that. And if, now, if that condition is now true, it will execute the code here. And what I'm going to write here is simply console log. Again, I could just basically copy this. So x, it will not be smaller 
uh, than 0.3, right? It will in fact be larger. We have established that. However, it will be smaller than 0.6. So it will be somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6. Now, if this is also not true, then it will jump to this line and it will execute this line. And so this is now not correct. Um, once we get to this line here, that means x must be a larger than or equal to 0.6. And so that's, that's the general construct of an if, else, if, else. So if this condition is true, if the first condition is true here, this will be executed and then you will jump out of this construct and, and continue executing any code that might be down here. If this is not true, but this is true, then this will be um, executed. And then after that, uh, the code will jump, you know, execution will jump down here. And then third, if none of these two are true, then uh, this code will be executed. So that's just a nice way to set up things if you have multiple conditions. If, for example, you want to say, well, I'm going to throw a number, and uh, in the case that this number is smaller than 0.3, I want to do something. In case it is larger than 0.3, but still smaller than 0.6, say, I want to do something else. And finally, if it's actually larger than 0.6, I want to do something else altogether. And we'll use this uh, a couple of times down the road. So let's save this, go back into the console, check out what's happening here. So 0.74 is larger than 0.6, it's correct. 0.08 is smaller than 0.3, it's correct. And so here we have an example where um, we were in the else if, so indeed 0.31 is larger than 0.3 and smaller than 0.6. So, so this code seems to be working fine. So that's the else if. Now, another thing that I want to mention here um, is a problem that I briefly uh, indicated in an earlier lecture, and that's uh, about the curly bracket. So let me get rid of this here. So let's say you forget the curly brackets and you do something like this. Um, let me just be, you know, let me just print the value of x up here. Just, just, uh, just so that we always get this value here in the console. And now you would say, well, if it's smaller than 0.3, I'm just going to print it again and I'm going to point out that it's smaller than 0.3. So you don't have curly brackets here. However, this still works. Okay, let's go back to the console. 0.78, just printing the value here. 0.67, just printing the value. Reload, reload a couple of times. Oh, okay, here. Printing the value, and then in the if uh, statement, the condition is true, and we print this line here. This is smaller than 0.3. So you see this code is working. However, it's dangerous code. Because really what's happening here is that JavaScript doesn't care about the line breaks or white space, and it's essentially identical to this. And we, did, we said in the beginning, or earlier in, in uh, this chapter, that you can, if you have only one line after an if statement, you can technically um, not write the, the curly brackets and it still works, and that's why it still works. However, if you do this, then later you may might say, oh, you know what, um, if x is actually smaller than 0.3, yes, I want to print this here, but I want to do something else. Okay, and then you might do something like this. You know, whatever you do here, I'm just going to print um, another statement here. Some important code. So now you look at this code and you think, well, it's pretty straightforward, right? So we're going to print the numbers here. And if x is smaller than 0.3, and I'm going to say that it's smaller than 0.3, and then I'm going to execute some important code. But only if x is smaller than 0.3, right? That's what you would think. Well, let's save this and go back into the browser. And let's reload the page. Aha. Uh -huh. 0 0.57. 0 0.57 is obviously not smaller than 0.3 which is why we're not printing the fact that it's smaller than 0.3. However, this line here, which you thought would only get executed if this value is actually smaller than 0.3, still gets executed. And so now your code does something that is 
totally not what you want it to. And that's because you don't use curly brackets anymore. And that's, so what's happening here is that this line is basically um, put up here, okay, because it, JavaScript ignores white space. And in a way, this line is put up here as well, because JavaScript ignores white space and a line breaks. So this is executed only if this is true. However, at this point, what concerns JavaScript, this if statement is now done with. And so this statement here is now a separate statement that has nothing to do with, with this if statement. So this is equivalent to writing this. Let me put the lines. Okay, which is not at all what you wanted. And so, because because what you wanted was this, right? You wanted to be, you wanted this line to be dependent on this condition to be true. So that is why that is the technical explanation why you need to always put these curly brackets here. It's just good practice, makes the code more readable, and certainly you're not going to be haunted by these very hard to find bugs that can really screw up your code. So always use these curly brackets when you work um, with if else statements. All right, so uh, let's go back to the, um, to the code here. I wanna do something else here. Well, not the code, uh, the browser, but let's go into the console. Um, I wanna show you something uh, with respect to these conditions. So we had things like, you know, if some number is smaller than another number, uh, and we would write it like this, right? Some number, or maybe that might be a variable, smaller than uh, some number. And of course, a statement like that gets executed and evaluated as true, because this is true. Uh, alternatively, you could say, well, if three or three being smaller than or equal to some other number, uh, obviously that's still true. Uh, and, and vice versa, of course, you could say uh, three larger than four, which would be false, or three larger or equal to four, which would also be false. So that these are pretty straightforward conditions, right? Um, there's another condition um, that we've used, and that's a testing not whether something is bigger or smaller, uh, but whether it's actually exactly equal. So we saw that this uses the double equal sign. So this three, being equal to four, would of course be evaluated to false, or vice versa, three being equal to three would be evaluated to true. Okay, so there are a couple of things I wanna note here. First of all, every condition gets evaluated to a Boolean value. So these are Boolean values and there are only two Boolean values and those are true or false. So any condition you see in a code, it will be evaluated to true or false and then it will, Usually the statement, the if statement certainly is only executed if your condition evaluates to true. Now, um, there's a little gotcha here um, that I mentioned. First of all, um, let me just reload the page to make sure we have a clear console here. Uh, let's say uh, I'm gonna save, uh, uh, I'm gonna define a variable a and I'm gonna store the value five into it, okay? So now if you look at a, a is indeed five. Um, okay, let's go ahead and define a variable b. And we are going to store a value five, but as a string, okay? So we have these quotes here, and by the way, you can use single quotes as well, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's take a look at B. Okay, B is also five, but is this the string five? Okay, it's not the number five. And that's because these are two different types. Uh, in fact, you can check the type of a variable by using the type of operator. So type of a will show you that this is indeed a number, B5. 
because a here is a number. And type of b is indeed a string. So now if we compare a to b, so you want to test for the equality of a to b. Now in practically all programming languages, this would evaluate to be false, or it might throw an error depending on the implementation. Why? Because in one case, you have the number five, which is literally a numerical, and in this case, you just have the character five, which is just a text character. And so comparing a, a number to a text character usually uh, means that you know the, your the programming language will indicate that this is not the same. However, in JavaScript, it will say they're the same. And why is that? It's because if you use this double equal, um, something here happens, which is called conversion, automatic type conversion. So this five, this string five, will be automatically converted by JavaScript to the corresponding number, which is five, and then you're actually comparing to numbers five. Now, um, this is for convenience uh, reasons, but of course, this could lead to um, complicated bugs down the line. If you want to be sure that you're not only comparing values, but that you're also comparing the types, then you would use this triple um, equal sign. And now this would return false. So I have no strong opinion on this. However, if you would Google this issue, you would find millions of documents with very strong opinions. Most people recommend that you use this. I'm sort of two minds about this. Um, it really depends what you want. The crucial thing is that you know about it. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just gonna stick with this notation because uh, we are never going to compare strings to numbers. We'll just compare either strings to each other or we'll compare, most of the time actually, we'll just compare numbers. And so this is perfectly fine. Uh, however, if you wanna be you know, very technically accurate, you may also use this triple equal sign. The important thing is that you don't do this, right? Because this is an assignment. You're now assigning the value that's stored in B to A you think you might be just testing for equivalence, but you're not, you're assigning the value. So the really important message here is that a single equal sign is when you assign a value and at least two equal signs means you're comparing values. Okay, I hope this clarifies some of the issues with conditions, with um, curly brackets, with the different types that we now work with, booleans, numbers or strings and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.